If you're applying to medical school in the next two years, it is time to lock in. And that framework starts with T, triage your time, tell the truth. I made this mistake and maybe you resonate with it. When we start out our pre-med journey, we don't know exactly what we're doing. So we put together these bits and pieces from what other upperclassmen are doing, from what we read on Reddit and SDN, or what we heard on that AMCAST adcom YouTube video that we watched. Ultimately, we fill in all these gaps with what we assume med schools want to see. And what ultimately happens is that along the way, we built this patchwork of activities. And if we were to be truly honest, if we were to tell the truth, those things are not true representations of what we actually care about. For me, I spent 343 hours in a blue polo and khaki pants as a hospital volunteer, miserable out of my damn mind. For me, I joined a club servicing people experiencing homelessness, and that is the trap. To be clear, that organization did and still does fantastic work, but it was not right for me. So I'm here to tell you that this train does have a last stop and it's coming soon. That last stop is when adcoms review your application, and decide whether or not you move on. So ask yourself, how much time are you spending on things you feel like you have to do? How much of your application is going to things that you'd be truly excited to talk about? And one more nuance, even if you truly like something, you still have to evaluate whether it belongs on your calendar now during this critical six month sprint of your pre-med journey. We had a student who loves being in an EMT, truthfully, but also felt that it erased every single weekend because his shift was from Saturday 7 p.m. to Sunday 7 a.m. And so we had to make a tough decision. Over the next year, he might have had another 500 hours to his EMT experience, but going from 1,500 to 2,000 hours wouldn't have made a difference. But 500 hours to restudy for the MCAT or allocate to his other most meaningful extracurriculars where he could start a project or become and ascend to a new leadership position, that would have made him stand out more. So we had to make that difficult change. Don't ignore this step. It is first for a reason. Because if you continue to invest in things that aren't serving your application, you're only lowering your chances. Even the fastest bullet train in Tokyo won't take you where you need to go if it's pointed in the wrong direction. So T, triage your time, tell the truth, and quit things. Reset if you need to. Now, if you're applying in the coming years, you're going to want to make sure that your application is equally as competitive as real applications that got in years before. We have eight full AMCAS applications that earned acceptances to the best medical schools in the country. Over 20,200 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click our link in our description box below. Now, I, identity, what will you be known for? We've worked hard to cut the fluff. On the other end, we want to highlight the gold. I knew that when I applied, if I were to get into medical school, it would 100% because of one of three things, Vietnamese community health, my life, the clinical experience where I helped patients lose weight, or my years of teaching and mentorship experience with the UCLA Academic Advancement Program, where I service the underrepresented, underserved UCLA students. And I knew that even though I spent three years in a basic science lab, that wasn't gonna make me stand out. I wasn't the best researcher, I didn't publish anything, and there were tens of thousands of pre-meds with equal, if not better, research careers. But those three things, VCH, my life, and the AAP, those things made me special. Now it's already impressive to know where you're strongest. It's another to double, triple down on what makes you special. One of our students, Erica, her entire application is centered on providing care for underserved communities. In fact, she knew that one activity made her special, her work as a health advocate for a safety net hospital. So to triple down on that, she founded an organization that supported local NGOs in building workshops, building programs to help community members access social services like Medi-Cal, housing credits, and food stamps. She knew that made her special and built on top of that impact. And that's why she already has eight interviews and three acceptances halfway through the cycle. Everyone talks about submitting early because of rolling admissions and don't forget to send in your transcripts because when you get them, yada, yada, yada. But everyone ignores the key months and year that lead up to applying. The cutting of the fat in T and the consolidation, the distilling of what makes you, you and I, that pre-work is necessary to give you the best chance to succeed. And truthfully, it's this attention to detail, the doubling down of your green flags and the axing of your red flags. That's what separates pre who get into medical school from those who don't. And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you don't wanna make the wrong decisions. Our pre-med gala students who submit their applications on time have a 100% acceptance rate. That's more than double the national average. And our results are because we work 
work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take on four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into some of the strongest programs in the country, click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. We move on to M, meaning memorialize what matters. I like breaking down things into their core components, the first principles. It's simpler and just makes sense to me. When people say you have a strong personal statement or strong work and activities, that means you have strong lived experiences and you have strong writing about those lived experiences. You have quality ingredients and you Michelin three star cooked literally and metaphorically with those ingredients. In T and I, the time and impact phases, we've worked on developing those ingredients. M is all about the Michelin star cooking, the actual writing. Every experience for our students is ultimately broken down into the 20-40-40 RIR framework. 20% about what you did, those are the responsibilities. 40% about the impact, what milestones, what achievements that you made. 40%, probably the most important 40%, is the reflection. What did you learn and how did this make Make you a better professional. Far too many pre-meds neglect the reflection, and truthfully, that's what separates you from everyone else. And those reflections don't come easy. They don't come after a month of just throwing stuff at the wall and hoping something sticks. They come from remembering. They come from the key patients that you've served, the mulling over, the shower thoughts, the foundational stories, the most memorable lessons, all of those things that you've earned in the last couple of years working on this activity. So M stands for meaning because what we're going to do is take the time to find meaning in our years of lived experiences. For many students, that looks like starting to brainstorm their writing by logging their key memories from each activity and reflecting on them, chewing on them, speaking about them to your friends and family, seeing what parts really shine, what, where you get really excited when you talk about something. That's how I wrote this most meaningful section about Ben, my first patient who weighed 244 pounds and lost 16 pounds over 16 weeks. I'll let you read on your own time, but pay attention to the specific details. He didn't walk in the sun, for example, with a white shirt because one time he sweat through his white shirt and two young women across the street pointed and laughed at him. Or that every night he watched Modern Family and that was our opportunity to have him climb onto his home climbing machine. This is the most common phase that pre-meds skip, and it's painfully obvious when you read their applications. You've done the hard work for years to build the right ingredients, and when we start transitioning to working on the actual applications, most pre-meds lose motivation. The best way to continue forward, to sustain our progress, is to make this fun somehow, to reminisce and journal, maybe throw on your favorite movie soundtrack in the background, maybe walk with your best friend and celebrate some of the really cool things that you've experienced over the years. A well-developed application doesn't happen solely on the computer. It happens outside of Microsoft Word, outside of Google Docs. The times where you're processing and extracting the most important parts of your most meaningful experiences. That brings us to section four, E, evaluate. Am I still on the right track. This is where it's infinitely important to have a third person point of view. It must be someone you trust, like an upperclassman or a medical student or a pre-med advisor like me. There are two necessary criteria though. Number one, they must have your specific context. That means they know your application near as well as you know it. They know your target med school, they know what you care about. And if you don't know those things, then they know how to ask the right questions or they have the lived experiences. They've done it themselves before or have helped other people do it. They know how to ask you those questions to get your answers out. Number two, they must be able to answer your questions today and in six months and in 12 months. These check-ins are mere moments in time. E stands for evaluate and a key word is that it asks if you are still on the right track. A purposeful emphasis on still because at any point in time, the ship can steer just a couple degrees off true north. The accountability ensures that we're not mindlessly going in the wrong direction because getting into medical school takes years. It's not gonna happen overnight or over a couple of months. So you need someone who's going to be available with you through time. That allows you and this person to make true judgment calls. Together, you guys have a good sense of your real strengths, your real weaknesses. You can compare that with the competitiveness of your target school. Then you can truly say whether you're confident or not confident. And even if you are not confident you can get in now, that's a good thing to know early because then you can ask the next question, which is what would it then take to be enough? What do I need to add or take away to become confident that I'm competitive for my target schools? Now we're able to exit the weeds and look at our entire journey from a bird's eye view, 10,000 foot view down. And then we can become much more strategic about where we're going 
and how we're getting there. It's time to lock in. If you like this video, you'll love this four-year breakdown of how I got into UCLA Med School. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.